Maxine Peake, Lady Chatterley's Lover. How familiar were you with this book before? Or did, you know, you just kind of think, oh yeah, I'll read that. I'd never read it before. Isn't that terrible? No. You think you know the story. And I just thought it was a bit of a saucy tale. Um, and then you realise it's, it's, it's much more than that as you read it. What were the things in the story that surprised you that you didn't expect in the book? I think it was sort of the political element about the impact of the Industrial Revolution, what it was having on the landscape and how current it was. It felt a very much a, an environmental piece, you know. Do you do a lot of preparation beforehand, kind of seeing what accents are required and you know, how many characters are in it? I'm going to have to be terribly honest here. It was my first ever audio book. It was a huge learning curve. I just thought, oh, you just go in and, and, and read them, don't you? And I just thought, oh, well, they've asked me, so they'll just want it northern. You know, and when they said I had to do the accents, I went into a sort of meltdown. I, I've learnt my lesson. It was a very steep learning curve. When you're reading for a, a long time, <laughs> are there those moments when you suddenly, almost almost you come to, and you're kind of like, I have no idea what I've been reading, but I have been reading out loud, and no one stopped me, so it must have been making sense. Well... The thing is, I must admit, after doing Lady Chatter's Lover, I said, never, never, never again. It was quite dramatic. But in terms of, you know, the, what point of the mountain you were at, when you turn the page and you see that Mellors isn't just speaking with an accent, he's speaking in a proper dialect. I mean, did you know that was, you must have known that was coming. Yeah, yes. And No, you didn't. Uh, no, of course I didn't. <laughs> didn't know anything was coming, apart from him. But there's a bum bum tip. You did an amazing job because on the page, it just looks impenetrable. And what you did, I think it's really beautiful. Let's have a listen to you doing Meller's uh, deep <laughs> Derbyshire dialect. Shall you have something? He asked her. Shall you have a cup of tea? Kettle's on to boil. He half rose again from his chair. If you'll let me make it myself, she said, rising. He seemed sad, and she felt she was bothering him. Well, teapot's in there. He pointed to a little drab corner cupboard. Uncupped, and tea's on mantle or yet. You see, that wasn't so bad. Yeah, it was gorgeous. It was absolutely gorgeous. In terms of it being, you know, it, obviously it's written by a man, but it's yes. very female-centric. How authentic did you think that was? You know, when he talked about uh, a woman's relationship to sex, particularly when, you know, they're young and they're, they're, they're using sex almost as a currency with boys. How real do you think that was? For me, Dirk Lawrence anyway does have, I always think, a more comprehensive understanding of the female psyche and the female anatomy. So there were moments when, oh, because I was shocked that it was, shocked in a pleasant way that this this was coming from a male pen understanding about a woman's sexual need. I, f I feel like those are the scenes in the book that absolutely work the best and stand the test of time. Yes. The, the scenes between Constance and Mellors. I mean, they're still electrifying. We're obsessed with love across the class divide, I think, anyway. There's always something you know, quite exciting about that. I think you did a gorgeous job. Thank I, you. I, you should, if you've got 12 hours spare, you should listen to it again, <laughs> Maxine, because I think, I think it's a lot better than you remember it being. Thank you.